Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill and this is Evening Prayer for Thursday, January the 20th. It's the second week of Epiphany and week two in the Psalm Cycle. And please join me. O oh God, come to my assistance, make haste to help me. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Most High knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Alleluia. Psalm 37, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, the Most High knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Most High. They shall be like the fat of lambs, consumed by fire, and vanish like the smoke. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous show mercy and give. For such as be blessed by God shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed by God shall be cut off. God guards the steps of the good, and delights in their way. If they stumble, they shall not fall for the Most High holds them by the hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor their children begging bread. They are ever merciful and lend, and their children are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and live forevermore. For the Most High loves justice and forgets not the saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be destroyed, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell there forever. The mouths of the righteous speak wisdom, and their tongues talk of justice. The law of their God is in their hearts, and none of their steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay them. The Most High will not leave them undefended, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Most High knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not Jesus himself, but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. And so he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired by his journey, was sitting by the well was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and it, who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Here ends the lesson. Now in today's story, Jesus had to escape from the Pharisees, and the journey from Judea to Galilee goes through Samaria, where he encounters a woman by Jacob's well. When Jesus asks this woman for a drink, she is surprised 
because she recognizes him to be a Jew and would not expect him to even speak to her, much less make such a request. Because, of course, Samaritans and Jews share nothing in common. And then Jesus begins to preach the gospel and discuss serious theological issues with her. This is even more surprising because Jews would not have a discussion of this sort with any woman, foreign or domestic, just because of her gender. And so we have here an example of a radical departure from cultural norms made by Jesus. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if he was breaking any specific law. However, I do know that discussing the gospel message with a foreign woman would be a cultural taboo for the Jews. The Pharisees would not approve and would certainly feel it necessary to put a stop to it. And we know they're already after Jesus because of the baptism ministry. It occurs to me that this radical departure from cultural norms is exactly what makes Christianity so difficult throughout the ages and even today. One must ask himself, have I really heard and understood the gospel? Have I embraced it and let it change my life? Will I, can I, put aside fear and choose a radical lifestyle that puts God first and my neighbor second? And what does that mean in practical terms? I challenge you to reflect on these questions and then strive to act as appropriate. Amen. Show us your mercy and grant us your salvation. Let your priest be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. In you shall we lie down in peace and sleep, for only you make us dwell in safety. Make us a righteous nation that keeps your truth, that we may glory in your judgment. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be always forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. For the intentions of those who have asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Guard our steps, dear God, and hold us up if we should stumble. Write your law in our hearts, that we may serve truth and justice, and live in peace forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless Jesus, my soul, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia.